Welcome to Sustainable Saturdays, episode 19. Uh, I'm glad to be back with you, visiting with you today. I know it's been a couple of weeks since my last content, but things have been kind of busy. Things have been going on. Uh, we've had to make some adjustments, some decisions, and uh, I'll talk about those more in the video. Uh, but it's so funny because what I've done here is I've taken these last few days to to meditate on it you know and you go through kind of the whenever you run into roadblocks and and things that that are seemingly in your way you uh you go through like the stages of grief almost you know it's the denial and then you're angry and you know and, and all these things and finally when i when i go through those stages whatever my stages are and then i get to the point of okay what is this really all about and then uh, i'm drawn back to the marcus aurelius quote that uh, and again, I'm paraphrasing that the impediment to action is is the way of action. The, the thing blocking, if there's a blockage in the way, then that's the very course that you should take. Um, it's almost like, uh, what was it, the, the road less traveled, the poem. Uh, there, there's always, there's always uh, f the, the level of fear. There's a level of uh, trepidation. There's a level of of just wondering the unknown um, just that that is required to, to step into those areas where you're being pushed against it's easy it's easy to swim with the stream it's easy to flow with ev what everyone else is doing but it's really hard to swim up stream to, to go against the flow and a lot of you in in this movement this permaculture movement the sustainability movement the magic movement, uh, the voluntarist and, and, and agorist and anarchist movement, all of you are, are swimming against a raging torrent um, of, of a mentality that people have created. So I know that it's, it's really hard, hard to do. So I want to encourage you in that. And that's kind of what hit me this week is, um, is how that the impediment to action uh, I need to investigate that as the course of action. So in case you're not you know, following our story that closely, we've run up against a, uh, a situation where the uh, county zoning is um, basically cited us for having raising the pigs um, and the chickens. Now the pigs, according to the ordinance, are you know, not within it's not legal according to the ordinance. Again, I question the legality of that. And then the, uh, but the, uh, but the chickens are within. Uh, they've got to be uh, more than 100 feet from the nearest residence. Uh, that's where they've got to be kept, and they and they are here. So that's that's no problem. And you know, I, I thought about like, let me fight this, and I asked for a court trial at municipal court. And was told I can't get a jury trial. At municipal court and uh, I, I may hire an attorney but I'm not so sure that um, this hasn't just forced me to the realization that it would be impossible for me to raise the, the size herd that I need to raise to be profitable uh, on this lot um, I mean it's possible but I would have to be working 24 7 foraging finding food um, all of that it would, it would have to be a full-time thing and, and at this point, we're not able to do that. And again, not complaining. I'm just talking about the normal farming situation is your inputs. It takes a while for the inputs, the outputs to uh, the outcomes to, uh, to equal and, and exceed the inputs. Uh, that's why things like um, uh, community supported agriculture are so, so important, so vital. If you're not a member of one of these, I, I say look and, and see what you can do about about joining one but anyway so what what Charlene and I are looking for now is a plot of land that someone um, someone has for sale or lease uh, even that we could put our animals on for a uh, for a while it would help clear their land I would move them around but just somewhere that I could have them um, I would of course that would require me getting a um, a herd dog uh, probably a great Pyrenees or something like that so um, but anyway, that's that's what we're looking at trying to do. So that way I can go out and move them around, have them forage, uh, clear the land, uh, and of course looking at possibly buying because again, we can't do what we want to do on this size land. And rather than, you know, I can rage against the machine and fight the machine and it's like, you know, why bother? Let let you know, 
leave, let the dead go bury the dead. I'll leave the people in these neighborhoods to their to their dead little lawns, and and you know they can they can have nice lawns, and then when the stuff happens um, and the and the food shortages come, um, they won't even know how to eat their lawns. Much less want to eat their lawns because they've got all the the chemicals on them. But anyway, I digress. So uh, so we're looking for a place to to. Out. If you're in the middle Georgia area and you have any ideas about anyone who might want to lease even a, a section of their farmland um, for uh, for someone to, to put uh, a small herd of pigs on, and uh, of course that way I would be able to put up uh, broad enough areas where I could keep uh, the animals segregated and and, and plan my uh, my litters and everything and, and do a much better job of that. So with that, um, we also, this is, this is uh, market week, uh, but we're unable to attend the market this week um, due to uh, the mulberry market, that is, on Wednesdays, due to our seeds not getting in in time. And again, I'm trying to, to, to get that rolling over um, with, with getting in seeds. And, and, uh, and again, here's where we're, we're talking about a situation where the output out, outcomes haven't, haven't caught up and exceeded quite the inputs yet. Because you know we've we've had seed that failed, um, you know, uh, not uh, germinating. We, we've had we've had you know seeds we lost. We lost like two whole crops to uh, to mold until I switched things around with my with my grow medium. So there's so those are all inputs that 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 just have no outcome as yet. And so, so having to keep up with that is, is where we're actually investing more. We're not, we're, we're investing into the red basically. Um, but that's, that's coming out better. I've got a lot more greens growing in. I'm a lot more experienced. I'm learning some of the, some more of the techniques. I'm learning some more of the timing and also with the, uh, with the, uh, with the order. That leads me to the third major change and that's to, to get more time, but at the same time, keep the, income coming in that we, we've had coming in. Um, and so I had been doing, picking up some inspection work and, and you know, riding with Charlene and, and picking up some inspection work, some gig work and things like that. But um, but it took me away from the house for so long because she's gone for eight, sometimes 10 hours in a day um, out. And, uh, and not only, you know, being away from dad, but just not get, being able to get things done here, but at the same time, you know, wanting to, to have the income. And so I turned back to an old friend and went back to uh, waiting tables. Uh, I'm working at, at Texas Border Grill here in Macon. If you're in the Macon area, come in, ask for Mitchell, you'll get really good service. Um, I'm not as nice to look at as the others who work in there because I'm a little older, got a little wear on the tires. But, uh, but I will give you good service and, uh, and probably tell you a good story or two. But, uh, but anyway, so I've, I've gone back to doing that and, uh, and actually I'm enjoying it and um, I'm getting, uh, it's more time, more bang for the buck. Um, so, uh, and I can work shorter shifts and they're in a real family oriented place. So they'll work around, uh, you know, they say, we wanna make sure you can take care of your dad. So, uh, and that is a big thing and not being away from here. Um, it's only, oh gosh, it's a 30 minute walk from my house right now. And so uh, you know, that's, that's bringing in income. Uh, it's also cash income, if you know what I mean. And, uh, and it still gives me time to do the market. And I'll only, I'm cutting back to one market a week. I'm, I'm gonna cut out the Perry market um, because the markets aren't really where, you know, we need to go with this thing. Uh, it's more into uh, subscription. So I'm, that's what I'm going to be really working on in the next couple of weeks is, is trying to put together how, you know, what I can produce and start trying to sell subscriptions where people are buying the, the microgreens uh, on a subscription basis. And, and that will, will settle me in because then I'll have a, a pretty much uh, week to week understanding of, uh, of how much product I need. Um, and then the market, mulberry market, will be kind of like an excess product day, and a way of, uh, and a way of gaining more, more customers, more subscribers. So that's what I'm going to be brainstorming on today. I haven't done a lot of brainstorming here in the past couple of weeks. I've been again in a busy period. It's it's, it's really weird. It was you know it's coming up to a full moon, so. Um, 
there was a lot of things going on there in this past week or so. But it's been good. I uh, hope you haven't missed me. I've missed uh, kind of being in front of the camera. Um, it's almost cathartic for me, and uh, I enjoy listening. But uh, we'll do some more stuff. I've got some eggs to polish up, and uh, and I'll keep you on track with everything else. And I'll get a, a shot of all the pigs here uh, soon. We get we do have one that is set to go to uh, to processing on April 18th. That was that was the soonest date that I could get scheduled. But I'm going to work on that too. There's some I've got some leads there as far as processing. The government, the USDA has uh, has a program now where they're trying to license. Uh, people who can um, who can travel and process uh, specifically for small farms like like ours and small operations that uh, they don't have like the big trucks to ship a whole herd to the uh, to the processor. So uh, so there's some things going on and, and happening. Um, that's you know that's an opportunity for someone if they're if they're skilled. Um, if you've got a, a, a deer or, or pig processing plant in the middle of Georgia area and you wanted to go mobile with it. That would be a pretty, pretty kicking sweet deal. I think I, I think you would, uh, you would have a lot more business in this area than you realize. Um, and of course, it, it would be kind of seasonal because uh, farrowing season for the pigs is is kind of, uh, you know, uh, there's a two two really major farrowing seasons per year for the pigs uh, for hours at least. Anyway, uh, I'm going to start polishing the eggs and uh, doing some more meditating here and thinking on where we're going and uh just you're welcome to come along for the ride and see uh, see where we go with this the impediment the uh the the thing that we thought it block i thought it was blocking me was wanting to fight it instead has become a uh hey let's let's utilize this let's don't butt our heads up against it even but let's utilize this to uh, to springboard uh use the energies that are in that impediment to springboard us into a into a different uh, trajectory, and with uh, with a lot more energy. Anyway, there'll be more. It's Saturday morning, and I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this last week's uh, Sustainable Saturday. I didn't get uh, videos of the piggies or the chicks, uh, chickens or the bunnies or anything cute like that to to store in here. But uh, but we'll be back next week. I'll start filming today. Start uh, creating content today and get back on track. I'm kind of uh, gained my footing now with what's going on and gotten a rhythm in life. And that's the thing with everything is, is establishing a rhythm and establishing a, uh, a, a way of, of operation. And so uh, I think I've got that settled down. I'll be uh, creating some more content. I'll be back with some more magic content this week as well. Uh, as also a Sunday short tomorrow. So uh, in case you've been missing me, and in case you haven't, I'm back. So until next time, namaste.